tomorrow is Christmas Eve. I'm sure you didn't even remind me that that's the truth of this. And um, so we're going to have a Christmas Eve service for the parish, and that will be at Trinity Burnham at 7.30. So we'll have that service at 7.30. And then the reminder that we also will have a New Year's Eve service. And uh, that also will be in terms of the five p.m. And then the uh, youth group is going to have a chili and baked potato dinner afterwards. And uh, they're going to stay and have some games. And the, uh, the reason we chose those times is just because by the time we're all wound up, people will go home. They get off the road before people get drunk and drunk. So, you know, we're, we're making sure that, that people are out of the way of, of our when that comes. All right. Uh, reminder, too, that, that we, um, we do not have confirmation today, so we won't have it until the, the first of the year there. Also, a reminder, reminder that that student, that Bob Stone will resume at Trinity Berkeley at 7 p.m. on January 7th. And then there is a parish council meeting. And that also is at Trinity Berkeley at 7 o'clock at 7 p.m. And then uh, that's January 7th. All right, uh, we do have a morning prayer on Tuesdays at 9 30, but obviously uh, this coming week we will not be having that because we're in the Christmas uh, season here. And then uh, there won't be any quilting, I think, this, this coming week as well. But uh, please keep that in mind because we're going to be Zoom uh, following. Uh, in here. So, uh, any other announcements before we start? No? All right. If there's nothing else, and I invite you to please rise to them again by, we're just going to sing some Christmas hymns today. All right. So, uh, you're invited right, to please stand and uh, sing our first one. Uh, hymn number 71, Angel Day of Vermont High.
worship in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, who all hearts are open, all desires know, and our little known secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. According to God's word in 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 through 9, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins before God and before one another. Most merciful God, I confess that I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what I have done, and by what I have left undone. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved my neighbor as myself. Therefore I come before your throne of grace, that I may receive mercy, and by grace to help in every time of need. Forgive me, renew me, and lead me, so that I may delight in your will, and walk in your ways, in the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, once given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God, and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. You are a treasured people of the Lord. The people of holy is the Lord our God. Keep the words of the Lord in your heart, teach them to your children. I go up when you are at home, when you are away, when you lie down, when you rise. For one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. Take away the hindrance of our sins, and make us ready for the celebration of your birth. That we may receive you in joy and serve you always. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. You may be understanding to the simple. 
I open my mouth and thank I long for your commandments. Turn to me in mercy, as you always do to those who love your name. Steady my footsteps in your word. Let no iniquity have dominion over me. Rescue me from those who oppress me, and I will keep your commandments. Let your countenance shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears because people do not keep your law. Here ends the reading of Psalm. The second lesson is from the letter to the Hebrews, the fourth chapter, beginning with the fourteenth verse. And the writer of Hebrews writes the following about the Holy Spirit. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us know the confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in every time of need. Here ends the reading of the second lesson. I invite you to please rise from the reading of the gospel. In the gospel from the gospel of St. John, beginning with the 19th verse. And this is the testimony of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. Why, what do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they have been they who have been sent by the, from the Pharisees, they asked him, Then why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. But among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptized. The Gospel of Amen. 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 Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have gathered us this morning to be in the presence of your Son. For you have said that we're two or three are gathered in your name, then you are in the midst of us. So we welcome you, Lord Jesus, and praise and honor and glorify you. And Lord, as we come today, we pray, Holy Spirit, be our teacher. Show us what we need to know and help us to apply it. And we ask this in Jesus' name, and we pray that the word of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, will be truly acceptable in your sight. Our strength and our humor. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. In the last couple of weeks we have been talking about the fact that Jesus, the Son of God, is our Redeemer. And as our Redeemer, by the shedding of His blood as well as His resurrection and ascension, He has purchased for us the inheritance of the saints and has delivered us, purchased us away from the power of sin, death, and the devil and the wrath that is to come. And over the next few weeks we have been talking about, we will be talking about, what the blood of Jesus purchases for us. Last week we were reminded that the very first thing that the blood of Jesus purchases for you and for me is the complete forgiveness 
of all our sins. So that we are righteous before the Father and able to enter in to all that God has for His saints. Now today, in Hebrews, we read something else. We are told in Hebrews something that we really won't find too much of throughout the rest of Scripture, although you find glimpses of it. And that is that Jesus is our great high priest. Now, we want to understand what that means. We need to know what a high priest does. And in the law of Moses, we were told that the high priest had a very important job one day a year. One day a year, he was to take the blood of the atoning sacrifice for the whole people, enter into the Holy of Holies, and sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat, so that the people of Israel could be forgiven their sins and enter again into a covenant relationship with God. Jesus is the great high priest. In fact, in Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews, who I believe would be Paul, makes it clear that he is of a higher order than the priesthood of Aaron, obviously. And so with his own blood, he ascends into heaven. He ever sees and enters into that holy place where he and the Father are face to face. And his blood intercedes for us so that we can enter into the blessings of the Father. And one of the blessings that is mentioned here in Hebrews 4 is that now the Father himself says to us, Come boldly before the throne of grace that you may receive mercy and find grace to help in every time of need. So the blood of Jesus opens up the way for every individual who believes in Jesus to come into his presence and not be afraid. And one of the things we need to see is what all the benefits are surrounding this statement because it's, it is, it's, it's, it's awesome. The first thing we need to see is that God says to you and me, come boldly before the throne of grace. What does that mean? Well, it means very simply that he invites us to come into his presence with expectation that he is our father and he is going to meet us with unmerited love and favor and mercy and that when we come before him, he is going to act positively in a holy way, in a wonderful way, in a way of love towards you and towards me, so that what we pray will be answered. We can expect results when we pray, because we are coming in the righteousness of Jesus. It says in James chapter 5 that the prayer of the righteous is effective. Well, one of the things that we need to understand when we pray is that if we are in Christ Jesus, what are we? Righteous. Not based on what we did. Not based on, on, on what we made ourselves, but based on what Jesus did. He has made us righteous. And the Father recognizes that. And so he says, come on boldly to the throne of grace. Because I'm prepared to answer your prayers and to meet your needs. Now, the reason this is important for us to see is because there are a lot of Christians who walk around and they act like God really doesn't want much to do with them. Or God really doesn't want to meet their need. God doesn't even want to really hear from them. I've heard many, many Christians say these kinds of things. And the reason for that is because of the fact that when they view God, they tend to view God based on what they have seen in human beings. They view God based on what they've seen through a parent or through somebody in authority, and they've been disappointed with that person. That person didn't come through, and so they're thinking, this is what God is like. You know, whenever I went to my dad, it was like I was bothering him all the time. And yeah, he would give me what I wanted from time to time, but that was basically because he didn't want anything to do with me. Or, I, I go to God, 
And I have some fear of trembling because of that principle that I used to go to school with, he was a real disciplinarian. And if I didn't show him just how horrible and sorry I really was, then you couldn't get what you wanted. I got good news for you. That's not God. That's not. That's us creating an image of God. That's a false image. We need to get that out of our minds. Because it's not God. God says, come boldly before the throne of great, great expect answers. Expect Him to meet the need. Expect Him to receive you and to love you and to have mercy on you and to show His favor upon you. Expect it. Come expecting Him to act. You know, so often people come before God and they really don't expect much from him. Primarily because they don't think that he really thinks much of them. But the good news is that God actually intends to answer. He intends to act. But our part of it is we need to come boldly. Come in faith. Come trusting that he's not the human being that you think of. But he's the God who does not lie. And is not a man to take back his word. Come boldly in faith. Faith that you are righteous because of what Jesus said. Faith that the way is open because you've made the way. Faith that God is your Father because you're coming before the throne of grace and not the throne of condemnation. If you're an unbeliever, the throne of condemnation is what awaits you. So if you're a believer, it's the throne of grace that awaits you. So you come before the throne of grace, you should expect mercy, love, favor, that God is going to answer. So let's focus on that when we pray. We have, by the blood of Jesus, a way into the Holy of Holies to see our Father and to get the answers that we need, our community needs, our family needs. The way it is open and we are the righteousness of God. He does hear us. He does want to act for us. And we need to enter in with that attitude. Now, with that in mind, there are a couple other things that we see here that are very important. First of all, what are we supposed to do once we get to the throne of grace? Well, to find mercy and to find grace to help in every time of need. So two things, mercy and grace. Mercy means that we come before God and we realize that the people we're praying for and the people that we are, well, by ourselves, we're weak. And if we're weak, we need help. We need compassion. We need Him to not judge us in our weakness, but help us so that He can make us strong. Come expecting that compassion. Ask Him. And in this sense, what God is saying is, when you come boldly before the throne of grace, that doesn't mean that you come without an honest assessment of yourself. The honest assessment of every one of us should be, you know what, Lord? Apart from you, I can do nothing. I need all of you I can get. I need all that you have so that I can go about the business of the kingdom and live the holy life that you want me to live. Help the Lord. Grant that mercy. It's okay to come that way. But now here's the condition. If you're going to ask for mercy and ask for compassion upon your weakness so that God doesn't judge you in your weakness but gives you the help that you need, there is one condition that we all need to be. And you know what that is? If you're going to ask it for yourself, make sure you give it to somebody else. How often does Jesus say, if you want forgiveness, you better forgive. If you want mercy, you better be prepared to show mercy. And isn't it true that in our lives, there are a lot of people that we meet who rub us the wrong way because of their own weaknesses. And rather than stand on them like above or giving them what's What's, what, what, what quote they deserve. By the way, never come to the throne of grace asking God to give you what you deserve. 
We're there for mercy, not justice. You understand what I'm saying? There's a lot of people around the country saying, we want justice. Really? If God's going to give us all justice, we are in trouble. Because there's only one end for us that he's going to give us justice. But thank God, but through the blood of Jesus, we don't, we don't get what we deserve. We get grace. We get mercy. And when we come before the throne of grace, we need to ask God to bring mercy to that other person. And help us to have mercy on that other person. And not assess them by their weakness, but assess them by what the Word of God says. And act accordingly. Act in love. Act in favor. Act in prayer. For them. If we're going to ask for mercy for God to disregard our weaknesses but to help us, then we need to do the same for others. That's a commitment we have to make. And then the second thing that we find is that we are to receive the grace we need for our time to meet. Now, grace here means the power of God working in us so that we can do what our flesh cannot do. Let me just say right now, none of us can actually act for God or live for God or thank for God, or do anything for God without that grace in us. On our own, we can't do it. We're too weak. When you consider all our brothers and sisters who are being crucified, tortured, jailed for their proclamation of the word, how do they have the strength to continue on in the midst of that? The answer is grace. God has given them the power to do in them what their flesh cannot do. You know, again, a good example is that at one point uh, in the book of Acts, we find that Paul was preaching and the uh, crowd took him out of the city and stoned him to the point where he was dead. And the people came around and they were, the, the saints showed up and then he got back up. Now, if he were like any, any human being who was not working on the grace, you know what he would do? Leave. I mean, think about it. You just got beat up with rocks, and we're not talking about little pebbles here. Great big brick like pebbles. And you're sore. You leave, right? That's not what he did. He went back into the city to continue preaching because there might be somebody who still can get saved. You know what that is? Grace. When someone who's an addict gets set free like that and they start sharing with others what God has done for them, how do they get free? Not through their own willpower, but through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends, we need the grace of God so that we can walk out this life in faith, love, and obedience and be the light and salt that we need to be. So, this is what Jesus has purchased. The assurance that when we come before the Father, He wants to answer our prayers. So we should come with expectation that He's going to answer. He's also purchased for us mercy. So that God doesn't look down on our weakness but is willing to help and strengthen us. He's also purchased for us grace. The power of the Holy Spirit working in us, doing in us what our, our flesh cannot do. So that we can go about the ministry that God has for each one of us and also be a people who walk in holiness of life. So let's give thanks. And as we come to the Christmas season where we remember the incarnation of God who became flesh to purchase us these very things and more. Let us give him the praise and the honor and the worship that belongs to the Son of God. Let's pray. Christian Heavenly Father, I thank you that through your Son Jesus you have provided for us access to you so that we know 
that you will lead us in love and favor and in mercy. And Lord, we do need your mercy. Lord, forgive our weaknesses. And fill us with your grace so that we may walk in holiness of life and in the strength of the Spirit and in the truth of your word. So that we may continue to be the light and salt that you want us to be in and, and share boldly the good news of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died for us so that by his resurrection we might be the righteousness of God in heaven. Thank you, Lord, that you have broken the power of Satan and every evil force and made us a new creation. Lord, hear our prayers and guide us in the way of righteousness. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. number 67. Hymn number 67, Away in the Major.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered by the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for all people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their names. Gracious Heavenly Father, it is your will that all people should come to you through your Son. Stir up your Holy Spirit within your church and within this congregation that we may have thought, word, and deed, reveal the good news of Jesus Christ, and bring many to safe and faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. prayers. Lord Jesus, you command us to pray for our nation. And so we pray your salvation on our president, vice president, the Senate, the House, the Supreme Court, our governors, state legislatures, state, local, and federal officials, and judges. Lord, where you're right, where they're right, sustain them, and where they're wrong, Grant us for the grace of supplication to recognize their wrong, the more over their sins to burn all his son, to throw all their iniquitous decrees into the fire, to burn them forever, and to establish policies that are pleasing in your sight and the furtherance of your kingdom. Raise up righteous men and women who will rule not according to the flesh, but according to your spirit and your word. And grant Daniels and Josephs with the wisdom of God to enter into the governance and bring a blessing to our nation. Lord, we pray that you would forgive our nation for bitterness, rage, anger, hatred, jealousy, unforgiveness, and unbelief. Forgive our nation for the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Forgive our nation for idolatry, witchcraft, and the occult. Lord, our sins mount to the heavens. To you belongs the glory, but to us belongs the shame. Lord, we pray that you would not pay us for you our sin, but in your mercy. Bring a great awakening to our country. Let it begin in, in the church. And Lord, we pray that you would bring a cleansing to the body of Christ in the United States and throughout the world. Cleanse us from all filth, rank, growth, and wickedness. Cleanse us from all compromise and sin. Lord, make us to shine like the sun. Burn out every impurity among us by the Holy Spirit. And Lord, grant us the grace to preach your word with power while you lift up your hand and heal miracles, wonders, and signs of heaven. And that the enemy would flee before the church, before the presence of the living God and the people of our nation to get on their knees in true repentance and declare, Blessed is he, Jesus, who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you commanded us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and for the salvation of the Jewish people. So we, we pray, Lord, that let now be the time that you fulfill your word in Zechariah 12, 10. Where they recognize you, the one that they pierce, mourn over you, is for the only Son, and are cleansed by your blood and filled with your spirit, joined in your church as the one you man. Lord, that you would bring your righteousness to Jerusalem and to Israel as your church in Israel declares the word of God while you lift up your hand to heal with miracles, wonders, and signs of heaven. That there would be a great conversion of the people, and that you would save your people, the brethren of Israel. Lord, surround them with your holy angels. Saints, protect them, Lord, from every evil thing. Lord, we also pray in Jesus' name that you would bring repentance where they need to repent, and with light where they are in darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord Jesus, you are the healer by your stripes, you are healed. Thank you for that. Lord, we pray the healing that you purchase on Calvin's Hill in the right of Romans, as the high school. Jalen Van Sweden, Bryce Johnson, Terry Rosecrans, Janine Westby, Bruce Tilts, Ella Beck, Doug Sorry, Oliver Sorry, Kathy Schaefer, Luther Tahara, Bobby Anderson, Dorothy Johnson, Joe Brightock, Josie Uthi, Lauren Vanderpan, Rose Lincoln, Real Lundquist, Stephanie Oyston, Ruby Overbold, Palmer Lindblom, Scott Uso, Dale Nelson, Jenna and Harrison Rambo, Penelope Cunnington, Rita and Sid Bowe, Ron Lincoln, Ross Reynolds, Candy Wentz, Lester Roberts, Otto Nelson, 
Phil Overbold, Mike Bachmeyer, Eric Graff, Diane Hawkins, Eric Ingrid, Leah Clooney, Stella Blake, Richard Stockton, the family of Jackie Roberts. And we pray your blessing on our military personnel, especially Michael Rasmussen, Shane Kettle, Patrick O'Malley, Kayla Dyer, Kevin and Eliza McKenzie, Scott Mark Wiley, Trevor Simmons, Jonathan Defoe, Isaiah Berg, David Berg, Sammy Lees, Riley Legacy, Harvey Hagel, Lee Johnson, and Jack Price. And we ask your blessings on all those who make now out loud or in our hearts. Lord, we pray for the persecuted church again this morning throughout the world. We have millions of brothers and sisters throughout the world under persecution of varying degrees, and we just pray for all of them. I think in particular, brothers and sisters, Gilgit and uh, Andrea Sandstein. Also, Lord, uh, I pray for uh, uh, Rosini Fall, uh, for Claudia, all our families and loved ones. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we also pray for all those who will travel uh, during this uh, season. We pray to give them safety in their travel and uh, bring them home and to their destination safely. Mm -hmm. Lord, we pray this to be a time of renewal as uh, people give their lives over to you again and are refreshed by your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. In your our prayer. Prayers. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all of them. We pray for us and in your mercy for your Son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. Let's share that peace of Lord.
product of our own is stress, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthening the kingdom of His grace. Oh. Uh -huh. 